We should have been patient. We should have studied these beings, learned about their past. Maybe then we could have chosen a different path, and the galaxy might have looked different now. But we were like gods traversing the stars, seeing these beings as mere animals. How were we to predict the outcome of our actions, which had been the same for hundreds of times before and had always led to the same result? But not this time. This time was different. In the history books, we'll be remembered as monsters, dictators, enslavers, and destroyers, even though we did not behave any differently than before. Worse yet, we'll be remembered as fools. We, who united trillions of beings across a thousand worlds under our flags, would be considered foolish, evil creatures who unleashed a greater evil on the galaxy. I don't have much time. I'm writing this in a hurry, my claws shaking with fear for the first time in a hundred planetary cycles. The last time I felt this fear was during my first fights as a young Wyarna. But unlike then, this fear brings no excitement, only dread and acceptance of the fate we've brought upon ourselves. I hope to finish this manuscript before their arrival, and perhaps, if I'm lucky, it might survive the destruction they'll bring upon me and my world. My name is Mirksal Tsloka, and I'm a Wiarna. We're a proud species, descended from the top predators of our world. This heritage shaped our lives and led us to expand and impose our will on other spacefaring species. But we were not cruel. We helped those we defeated if they proved their worth. We respected strength, skill, and ferocity. Those species that displayed these traits were almost considered our equals. But we were always in control. The others, those from the cowardly herds or pre-space species, were treated as livestock. Our Imperium was vast and powerful, with a thousand worlds and several dozen races at its peak, and hundreds more forming its base. A pyramid of power, built on the ideology of an apex predator. But our worldview blinded us. There was no alternative. For nearly four millennia, we had progressed in this way. The strong ruled and the weak or simple-minded obeyed. I spent my early years learning for the sake of learning. I was in odd Wyarna, choosing to write in my last days rather than preparing to defend my home. I believed that every species had its unique way of functioning. Sometimes the differences were subtle, but they were always there. It was my desire to understand these differences that led me to be assigned to one of the survey flotillas, a tedious and dull duty— we traveled the stars, noting resources, marking worlds, and mapping hazards. The worlds with inhabitants were the most interesting, but also the saddest. We spent a lot of time observing and studying the inhabitants of these newly discovered planets. We found sentient beings on three of these planets during my time as a survey officer. Two were relatively primitive, easily subdued, and would likely make good slaves or low-level soldiers for the Imperium. The third was the most fascinating. We found them in a minor system, in one of the less useful spiral arms of our territory. They had recently achieved spaceflight, but seemed to have halted their progress. This was baffling. No other species we'd encountered had ever reached space and then stopped. They had explored some of their system, and then seemingly lost interest in venturing beyond their immediate orbit. We spent a planetary year observing these beings. They seemed easy to subjugate. They hadn't even formed a unified planetary government. But they were unlike any other species we'd encountered. Their fragmented nature likely stemmed from their being neither a herd-based race nor an apex predator race. They were a mystery, possibly due to their galactic position. After two of their planetary orbits, I returned with the invasion fleet. Our admiral, a proud and pompous example of our species, had personally requested me for my first-hand observations. He didn't care about their unique nature or what could be learned. He just sought the honor of enslaving another species for the Imperium. As we bombarded their densest population centers, I never expected the sequence of events that were to unfold. We had underestimated them. These beings we had dismissed as mere curiosities. Instead of cowering in fear or surrendering as most species did, they retaliated. 
It was not the retaliation we were accustomed to. It wasn't a last stand or a futile fight. It was an organized, strategic, and fierce resistance, the likes of which we had never seen. They had hidden their technological advancements well. We learned too late that they had merely paused their space exploration in favor of perfecting their planetary defense tactics. Their weapons, while not as advanced as ours, were effective enough. They targeted our ships with precision and tenacity. One by one, our fleet fell from the sky, crashing into their world in a blaze of fire and debris. And like a cosmic irony, the would-be conquerors became the conquered. Our admiral, the arrogant Wyarna who had led us to this disaster, was the first to fall. His ship crashed into their largest city, the impact leaving nothing but a crater and debris, where once stood a metropolis bustling with life. As I write this, the last of our ships are being taken down. In a few hours, this world, which should have been another jewel in our Imperium's crown, will become our tomb. A fitting end for us, I suppose. We thought we were gods, but we were merely players in the grand scheme of things as susceptible to the laws of the universe as the beings we sought to subjugate. So here I sit, writing my last words, a testament to our arrogance and folly. Our downfall is imminent. I can only hope that this account survives, that the next species to find it learns from our mistakes, that they understand the importance of respecting all forms of life, no matter how seemingly insignificant. As I look out at the burning sky, I realize that this is not the end for us. It's a new beginning, a chance for us to learn, to grow, to evolve. Maybe one day we will rise again, a better, wiser species. But for now, we must face the consequences of our actions. I hear them now. Their ships are approaching. I can see their lights piercing through the smoke and flames. It won't be long now. I take comfort in knowing that our story will continue, even if we are not the ones to tell it. We will become a part of their history, a reminder of the dangers of unchecked ambition and hubris. I close my diary and look out at the burning world one last time. I am Mirksel Tsloka, and this is my confession. The end is here, but it's just another beginning, another step in our evolution, another lesson learned, and for that I am grateful. As the door to my quarters breaks open, I put down my pen and stand tall. We may have been conquerors and dictators, but we are also warriors, and we will face our end as such. I have no regrets. If we'd really grasped what we were up against, things might have been different. But who could have guessed? No creature we knew built weapons like we encountered. Every species we knew reached the stars united, presenting a unified front. Even then, the weapons we found seemed excessive, especially for a divided race like humans. There were simpler, cleaner ways to attack a planet— a space rock could cause even greater devastation. But humans did something different, something downright crazy. They harnessed nuclear power and put it on a missile, a weapon designed not for other species, but to use against each other, right in their own atmosphere. It was crazy, but it happened. We could have seen it coming, but we brushed their missiles aside, confident that nothing these primitives had could hurt us. We were shocked when our ships got hit, and our shields flickered off. We thought it was an accident. Then it happened again and again. Almost our entire invasion fleet was wiped out, a catastrophe that stained our admiral's honor. We were unprepared for this. It wasn't supposed to happen. But there we were, watching from our command carrier as countless warheads erased our ships in blinding explosions. These mad beings had harnessed the power of the sun for their weapons, at crazy costs, for a crazy reason— and we paid the price. Admiral Tsuma took his own life before the planet had even completed a rotation, before the last of the missiles had exploded, destroying nearly our entire fleet and leaving the rest barely functional. The succeeding admiral was clueless, and so we ran, escaping from the insanity of that world before another missile storm could wipe us out. We told ourselves it was a strategic retreat, but it was fear pure terror that drove us. When a predator encounters something it can't fight and survive, it flees and waits for a stronger, more plentiful time. 
we were no different. We limped back to our Emperor, hoping for guidance. But with our surviving ships heavily damaged, what should have been a swift journey took a dozen planetary cycles. That journey gave me time. The time I'd requested, pleaded for, the time we didn't know we needed to understand these beings. Our databanks survived the strikes of their weapons, and the wealth of information we'd extracted from their networks lay before me. I spent day after day studying their history, their language, their ideals. I learned what they called themselves, humans, and I trembled at what I discovered. Our interference had distracted a remarkably violent, fast-breeding species from self-regulation. Our history is filled with brief wars, unification, conquest, and subjugation, but nothing compared to the wars in humanity's history. They fought over trivial things, rocks, dirt, ideals, words. Any minor excuse and they would fight. Their division had kept us safe, but the more I learned, the more fearful I became. The alarms are sounding. They've arrived. I've run out of time, but if this message reaches another empire out there, heed my warning. We've awoken a beast. The humans aren't interested in peace talks. We've become their worst nightmare, and they're out to obliterate their fears. Run if you can, hide if you can't. If you stand and fight, say goodbye to your loved ones and brace yourself, for they won't stop. Mirksalt's Loka, last intellectual of the Wiarna.